Pass that to the pack. It is pack here. <laughs> In today's video, I had the seventh roster update of NBA 2K24. What I do in these videos is that when 2K drops a brand new roster update, I go into the game and talk about the players who got upgrades and downgrades. I only talk about the most important ones of every single team. If I talked about everyone, it would take forever. That's what I'm doing in today's video. Yes, this video is a bit late. I was late on the sixth roster update, and now I'm late on the seventh roster update. So I've just been trying to catch up to the one that's going to come out this Thursday, which will be the eighth roster update. So so that's why I'm letting you know I am behind and I'm trying to catch up right now. Okay. Reminder, these videos will not have as much editing because I want to focus on other videos and make more time for those. If you like this kind of content when it comes to NBA 2K24 ratings, news, and updates, please join the pack and subscribe. I do it regularly. Let's get it, man. We're going to start off with the Washington Wizards as we usually don't because we want to change it up. Denny plus two. He is an 82 overall. This is the highest he has ever been. This is a bright look for the Washington Wizards when young players are getting better. That's always a good thing. This team has been pretty bad these last couple of years, but this is a nice little change. Jordan Poole plus two, finally starting to look a little bit better, right? That's a positive, but still not where he needs to be. And Corey Crispert also plus two. And finally, Kyle Kuzma plus two up to an 83 overall. Everybody looking pretty good on the Wizards. For the Golden State Warriors, we have Steph Curry minus one. But we have Andrew Wiggins plus three, who is tied as the highest upgraded player in this roster update. We also have Brandon, who goes plus one, and we have Dario Sarge minus one. So taking a look at this Warriors roster, still Kaminga is looking like the second best player on the team. I know that has Draymond over him, but I personally think Kaminga has passed him. The Warriors should still be a playoff team. It's just it's a very different look for this dynasty. For the Blazers, the only player to talk about is DeAndre Ayton. Let's call him Dominating because he got a plus one this roster update. He's looking like he might be the best player on the Blazers these last 10 games where he's been averaging 22 points on 65% from the field and 13 rebounds a game. This is the DeAndre Ayton that people thought they were going to get in Phoenix. He's looking like that now with Portland. Hopefully he can continue to play like this. For the Minnesota Timberwolves, big one. Anthony Edwards plus one. He is a 90 overall club member for the first time in his career. 90 overall is elite. To get there is basically saying you're almost a superstar at this point. TJ Warren goes minus two. He was on multiple teams. He was in Brooklyn, Phoenix, Indiana. We know that during the bubble, he was cooking. Let's hope that TJ Warren, now that he's on a new team and giving a new chance, can be that player again. The OKC team that has been so good this year. SGA plus one, 96 overall. This is a significant rating. I mean, this is one of the best players in the NBA. He's second in MVP voting right now, at least projected. Dude's cooking. Jet Holgram plus one, 87 overall for a rookie is massive. Jalen Williams plus two highest rating he's ever been in his career and Gordon Hayward who goes minus two now they added Gordon Hayward to see if he could fit and be a good role player on the team so far it hasn't looked that way but it's early for him Phoenix this one this one to me is pretty significant we have Nurkic plus one we have Eric Gordon plus one and then the biggest one is Royce O'Neal plus three this is a big deal because the Phoenix Suns have an amazing starting lineup, but it's their bench that is really lacking. And it's been lacking all year. In fact, you want to know a stat. Only two players on the Suns play more than 12 minutes per game that aren't starters. And that is Eric Gordon and now Royce O'Neal, who got to plus three. Efficiency wise, he's been horrible, but defensively and minutes wise, he's been one of the better players on the team. They're going to need players like Royce if they want to win an NBA championship. For my city, we've been horrible, but Victor Wembanyama has been looking good. No upgrade for him. I, I want to address something real quick. I like. I see a lot of you guys in the comments say, oh man, Victor Wembanyama cannot be this high. Like last video, y'all said Victor can't be the same rating as Anthony Edwards. Here's the thing. I know that the team is losing, but statistically speaking, there is no argument against him being a 90 overall player. I think Victor at that, in, in terms of just statistics, he has to be there defensively and offensively. He's a cheat code. If Victor Wembanyama was on any playoff team, I think all of us would agree this dude's a 90 overall player, but because he's on a bad team, we don't see it that way. But Let's not act like once the Spurs get a little better, he's still going to be putting up these numbers. The only change here is Zach Collins plus one. And honestly, it's not deserving. I don't like Zach Collins. For the Houston Rockets, Jabari Smith Jr. plus one. This makes him tied with Jalen Green on the team. This is the first time for him. 
Amen Thompson, minus one, and Cam Whitmore, minus one. The rookies are obviously going to slow down here and there, so it's not a big deal. The Raptors are kind of all over the place after the trades that they've been making. Scotty Barnes, minus one, and now injured. Jakob Pertl, minus one, and injured. Emmanuel Quickly, plus one, and Grady Dick gets plus two, his highest rating of the year so far. Grady Dick is now getting more minutes now that everyone's injured so that he can have a better role on the team throughout the year and next year, hopefully. For Detroit, Cade Cunningham, plus one, highest rating he's ever been at an 85 overall. Jaden Ivey, who goes minus two, one of the biggest downgrades in this roster update, but in fairness to him, he's going to be a bit inconsistent because he hasn't started all year until recently. For the New Orleans Pelicans, Zion Williamson minus one, which I don't know if it was necessary, but whatever. The big one is Brandon Ingram plus one. So this is significant because before he was Tyler C.J. McCollum just a couple weeks ago, and now he's almost the best player on the team with Zion. I mean, that's a huge difference in just a couple weeks. So Ingram's that dude. Herb Jones plus one, now making him the solidified fifth best player on the roster. All downgrades for the Indiana Pacers. Tyrese Halliburton minus one, Benedict Mathurin minus one, and finally Aaron Naismith minus one as well. For the Denver Nuggets, it's really just Michael Porter Jr. plus one, tying him as a third best player with Aaron Gordon, and that's really it. For the Brooklyn Nets, we have Nicholas Claxton minus one, and we have Ben Simmons a minus one, down to a 77 overall, and is probably out for the year. This dude's career, I'm going to say to this point, is over. I think this is the last we'll ever see of Ben Simmons, really. It's at this point, I think it's a fact. The Dallas Mavericks, who are looking better lately, this roster update is a little delayed for this, but Tim Hardaway Jr. minus one and Dwight Powell minus two, but they're looking so much better lately that it's not a big deal. Orlando, who have had an amazing year, upgrades for them for the most part. We have Wendell Carter Jr. back in the 80 overall club, plus one. We have Jalen Suggs, 80 overall club, plus one. Now the third best player on the Magic. And then we have Marco Fultz, minus one. And Goga, who goes minus two. But for the most part, upgrades for this Magic team that are basically guaranteed a playoff spot. Positives for the Lakers. Anthony Davis, plus one, 94 overall. And then D'Angelo Russell, who's been playing out of his mind, plus one, 83 overall. Now the third best player. Spencer Dinwiddie has been getting hella downgrades, going from like an 81 to a 75 in just a month. Minus two for him. He is struggling so hard with the Lakers. A lot of changes for the Knicks. It's Hartenstein minus two. I think we all know he probably is around an 80 anyways. Bogdanovich minus one. Josh Hart goes plus two. This is the big one. In the last 10 games, he's averaging 40 three minutes a game you heard that right 14 points 13 rebounds and six assists per game at six foot four these are russell westbrook numbers pressures at you plus one and then finally miles mcbride plus one as well for the knicks they look pretty good they really need julius randall back though if they want to be a contender type of team the kings it's a bonus plus two 90 overall club member for the first time in his career up there with anthony edwards today and De'Aaron Fox plus 289 overall. This is big for Sabonis. I mean, he's in MVP conversations right now. That's how good he's been. I don't think he's actually going to win it, but doing an amazing job this year, he deserves this. The Utah Jazz, a pretty big one in my opinion. Keontae George plus three to a 79 overall. I told you guys at the beginning of the year, after the summer league, I had expectations for two players. One was Victor Wembanyama. Well, that was obvious. But two was Keontae George. Keontae George had an amazing summer league. It was one of the better playmakers in the summer league. He's having a great time right now in the last 10 games he's cooking. It's going to be like this for the near future as well. THT plus one, and that's it for the Jazz. The Hornets, who actually look pretty good after some trades they made. Grant Williams plus one has found a new home so far with Charlotte. Trey Mann as well. A new home in Charlotte apparently looking pretty good. Young talent and Davies Bertans plus two. All over the place for the Hornets, but all positives. For the Miami Heat, pretty simple. Bam out of bio plus one. And Duncan Robinson also plus one. He's back. It looks like he's back. Probably comeback player of the year from the last two seasons where he's been pretty bad to now. Good for him, bro. He's he's found his rhythm again. Super simple for the Atlanta Hawks. We have DeAndre Hunter plus one, and that's it. For the Memphis Grizzlies, super, super basic for them too. Jaron Jackson Jr. plus one as well. That's it. But the Clippers are a little more complicated. We have Russell Westbrook, who goes minus one, still an 80 overall club member and injured. Terrence Mann, who goes plus two. That's a pretty big upgrade for him. Good so far. The last one, though, is the important one. P.J. Tucker minus two. P.J. Tucker is not a happy man. This man has been an important, basically starter for most NBA teams he's played for for the last, what? I'd say like eight years. He's been a one of the better role players in the league for the last couple years. 
The Clippers aren't even playing him. And this is upsetting him. He feels like he still offers a lot. Look, he's 38 years old. Maybe it is time to hang it up for him. But he's not happy. The Clippers don't really want to play him. The most cheater team in the NBA, the Celtics, plus one for Derek White. Everyone in the starting lineups in 85 overall, at least, is bonkers, bro. Insane team. In terms of just talent and ratings, they really should win the NBA championship this season. For the Cavs, we have Max Struess, plus one, doing a lot better, and Isaac Okoro, plus one as well. This team is playing so good lately. I think the second seed in the East, it's insane. For the Chicago Bulls, a really cool one to me. Andre Drummond, plus one. He is a 79 overall, almost an 80 overall club member. It's been a long time since he was that close to that rating. He's averaging 17 minutes a game in the last 10 games, and he's averaging almost 10 rebounds. 17 minutes and almost averaging 10 rebounds is insane. Iota Sanmu also goes plus one, and that's it for the Bulls. For the Milwaukee Bucks, Patrick Beverly plus one one and Danilo Gallinari minus one besides that no major changes from Milwaukee and last but not least the Philadelphia 76ers Tyrese Maxey plus 188 overall is a really high rating for him this is the highest he's ever been Kyle Lowry has found a new home in Philly plus one playing okay a great playmaker for the team so far and Nick Batum minus one for the 76ers they're doing their best without Joel Embiid but hopefully he can come back by the playoffs because they're going to need him Okay, that is the seventh roster update. What do you think about these rating changes? Do you agree or disagree with 2K? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this channel, please give it a sub. I'll see you guys next time.